This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, this is a day This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple. It changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't, just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. Actually, here it is, but we're going to leave it there for now. So, before we get into it, let me. Uh, let me talk about a category of things. The most advanced phones are called smartphones, so they say. And uh, they typically combine a phone plus some email capability, plus they say it's the internet, sort of the baby internet, in the one device. And they all have these plastic little keyboards on them. Uh, and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis. Phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart and they're, you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been 
and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? So, we're going to reinvent the phone. Now, we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. Is the result of years of research and development. And, of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the BlackBerry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away, and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers. And we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. You don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so, so we've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product. The Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. So a revolutionary user interface. We're going to build on top of that with software. Now, software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough, software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. Now, why, why would we want to run such a sophisticated operating system on a mobile device? Well, because it's got everything we need. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security. And to write apps, it's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in. And it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want. And it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking. 
right? Not the crippled stuff that you find on most phones. This is real desktop class applications. Now, you know, one of the pioneers of our industry, Alan Kay, has had a lot of great quotes throughout the years. And I ran across one of them recently that explains how we look at this, explains why we go about doing things the way we do, because we love software. And here's the quote. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. You know? Alan said this 30 years ago. And this is how we feel about it. And so we're bringing breakthrough software to a mobile device for the first time. It's five years ahead of anything on any other phone. The second thing we're doing is we're learning from the iPod, syncing with iTunes. You know, we're going to ship our 100 millionth iPod this year. And that's a, tens of millions of people that know how to sync these devices with their PCs or Mac and sync all of their media right onto their iPod. Right? So you just drop your iPod in, and it automatically syncs. You're going to do the same thing with iPhone. It automatically syncs to your PC or Mac right through iTunes. And iTunes is going to sync all your media onto your iPhone, your music, your audiobooks, podcasts, movies, TV shows, music videos. But it also syncs a ton of data. Your contacts, your calendars, and your photos, which you can get on your iPod today, your notes, your, your bookmarks from your web browser, your email accounts, your whole email setup, all that stuff can be moved over to iPhone completely automatically. It's really nice. And we do it, we do it through iTunes. Again, you go to iTunes and you set it up, just like you'd set up an iPod or an Apple TV. And you set up what you want synced to your iPhone. And it's just like an iPod. Charge and sync. So sync with iTunes. Third thing I want to talk about a little is design. We've designed something wonderful for your hand. Just wonderful. And this is what it looks like. It's got a three and a half inch screen on it. It's really big. And it's the highest resolution screen we've ever shipped. It's 160 pixels per inch. Highest we've ever shipped. It's gorgeous. And on the front, there's only one button down there. We call it the home button. It takes you home from wherever you are. And that's it. Let's take a look at the side. It's really thin. It's thinner than any smartphone out there at 11.6 millimeters. Thinner than the Q, thinner than the Blackjack, thinner than all of them. It's really nice. And we've got some controls on the side. We've got a little switch for ring and silent. We've got a volume up and down control. Let's look at the back. On the back, the biggest thing of note is we've got a 2 megapixel camera built right in. The other side, and we're back on the front. So let's take a look at the top now. We've got a headset jack, three and a half millimeter. All your iPod headphones fit right in. We've got a place, a little tray for your SIM card. And we've got one switch for sleep and wake. Just push it to go to sleep, push it to wake up. Let's take a look at the bottom. We've got a speaker. We've got a microphone. And we've got our 30-pin iPod connector. So that's the bottom. Now, we've also got some stuff you can't see. We've got three really advanced sensors built into this phone. The first one is a proximity sensor. It senses when physical objects get close. So when you bring iPhone up to your ear to take a phone call, it turns off the display and it turns off the touch sensor instantly. Well, why do you want to do that? Well, one, to save battery, but two, so you don't get spurious inputs from your face into the touch screen. Just automatically turns them off, take it away, boom, it's back on. So it's got a proximity sensor built in. It's got an ambient light sensor as well. We sense the ambient lighting conditions and adjust the brightness of the display to match the ambient lighting conditions. Again, better user experience saves power. And the third thing we've got is an accelerometer so that we can tell when you switch from portrait to landscape. It's pretty cool. I'll show it to you in a minute. So three advanced sensors built in. So let's go ahead and turn it on. This is the size of it. It fits beautifully in the palm of your hand. So an iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. Let's start with the iPod. You can touch your music. You can just touch your music. It's so cool. You've got a widescreen video. 
You can find your music even faster. Gorgeous album art on this display. Built-in speaker, and why not? Cover flow. First time ever on an iPod. And so rather than talk about this some more, let me show it to you. All righty. Now, I've got some special, special iPhones up here. They've got a little special board in them and a, so I can get some digital video out. I've got a little cord here which goes up to these projectors. And uh, so I've got some great images and you get to see what it really looks like. So let me, I've got a camera here so you can see what I'm doing with my finger for a few seconds. And uh, let me go ahead and get that picture within picture up. I'm going to go ahead and just push the sleep-wake button and there we go, right there. And to unlock the phone, I just take my finger and slide it across. All right? You want to see that again? Go to sleep. We wanted something that you couldn't do by accident in your pocket, and just slide it across. Boom. And this is the home screen of iPhone right here. And so if I want to get in the iPod, I just go down that lower right-hand corner and push this icon right here, and boom, I'm in the iPod. I want to get home, I push the home button right here, and I'm home. Back in the iPod, I'm back in the iPod. Now here I am, you can see five buttons across the bottom. Playlists, artists, songs, videos, and more. I'm an artist right now. Well, how do I scroll through my list of artists? How do I do this? I just take my finger and I scroll. That's it. Isn't that cool? Get a little rubber banding up when I run off the edge. And if I want to pick somebody, let's say I want to pick the Beatles, I just tap them. And here's the Beatles songs with their albums right here. If I want to play Sgt. Peppers, I just hit Sgt. Peppers right there. And uh, you know, a little help for my friends. Look at this gorgeous album artwork here. Of course, I got a volume control. Now, I've got a little button up in the corner right here. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, I can hit that and flip the album art around. Here's all the other songs back here. And I can play Lovely Rita if I want to. Flip it back around. Very simple. All right, I can set some stars back here just by setting the arrows. All right, that's a five-star album. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Now. Let me show you something else. I just take my unit here and I turn it landscape mode. Oh, look what happens. I'm in cover flow. Well, let's go into Dylan here. Let's play like a Rolling Stone. That easy. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it it's that simple. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. I could play with this for a long time. Uh, <laughs> now, again, I've got playlists here. I can go into my playlists. I've got artists. I've got songs. Uh, I've got more over here. I've got you know, albums. I've got a great album view, again, that shows all my album artwork right here if I want. Uh, and uh, I've also got audio books and compilations and things like that. I've also got videos here. So I push videos. And uh, I've got here, I've got a podca video podcast loaded on and a music video. And, I've got a TV show and a movie, and I'd like to just show you the uh, TV show here. This is an episode from The Office. All videos we look at in, uh, in and landscape. Now, an NBC presentation. Hey. Hey. Who are you faxing so early in the morning? 
Oh, um, kind of hard to explain. I don't have a ton of contact with this Grant and Branch, but before I left, I took a box of Dwight's stationery. So from time to time, I send Dwight faxes from himself, from the future. <laughs> Dwight, at 8 a.m. today, someone poisons the coffee. Do not drink the coffee. More instructions will follow. Cordially, future Dwight. We have touch controls on here, of course. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Let's go, uh, and I want to show you uh, a movie playing. Let's play Pirates of the Caribbean, the second one here. Great movie, by the way. And, uh... The bright side is, you're back, and made it off. Now, this is a widescreen movie, so I just double tap, and I can see the whole thing here, or I can fill up the screen, whichever I like. And again, I've got on-screen controls here. Isn't this cool? So we can be watching feature-length movies just like this. All righty. So that is the iPod. Pretty cool, huh? We've just started. So again, touch your music. Just scroll through your songs. Scroll through your playlists. It's incredible. Widescreen video like you've never seen on a portable device, 160 pixels per inch, gorgeous screen quality, gorgeous album art, and cover flow. It's the best iPod we've ever made. Again, some of the screenshots, it's unbelievable. Here's some album art I just put up so you can see what it looks like. Just no matter what you like, it looks pretty doggone gorgeous. And of course, cover flow and video with on screen controls. You know, I was showing this to somebody, I was giving a demo to somebody uh, a little while ago who'd never seen this before inside Apple. And uh, I finished the demo. I said, what do you think? They told me this. He said, you had me at scrolling. <laughs> so the iPhone with the most amazing iPod ever, you can now touch your music. So that's the iPod. Now let's take a look at a revolutionary phone. We want to reinvent the phone. Now, what's the killer app? The killer app is making calls. It's amazing. It's amazing how hard it is to make calls on most phones. Most people actually dial them every time. Most people don't have very many numbers in their address book. They use their recents as their address book, right? How many of you do that? I bet more than a few. So we want to let you use contacts like never before. You can sync your iPhone with your PC or Mac and bring down all your contacts right into your phone. So you've got everybody's numbers with you at all times. We have something that's going to revolutionize voicemail today. We call it visual voicemail. Wouldn't it be great if you, didn't, if you had six voicemails, if you didn't have to listen to five of them first before you wanted to listen to the sixth? Wouldn't that be great if you had random access voicemail? Well, we've got it. Just like email, you can go directly to the voicemails that interest you. Excellent audio quality iPhone is a quad band GSM plus Edge phone. We have decided, we've decided to go with the most popular international standard, which is GSM. We're on that bandwagon, headed on that roadmap, and uh, plan to make uh, 3G phones and all sorts of other amazing things in the future. So quad band GSM plus Edge. And of course, we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 2.0 EDR built in as well. And so this is what it looks like when you get a call. This is what it sounds like. It's one of our ringtones you can pick, of course. So 
I want to show you four things. I want to show you the phone app, photos, got a calendar, and SMS messaging. The kind of things you would find on a typical phone, but in a very untypical way now. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's go to our phone first. You see that uh, icon in the lower left-hand corner of the phone? I just push it right here, and boom, I'm in the phone. And I've got five buttons across the bottom. Favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, and voicemail. I'm in contacts right now again. How do I move around my contacts? I just scroll through them. And so let's say I want to make a call to Johnny Ive. I can just push here, and I see Johnny Ive's contacts with all his information, his three phone numbers, his email, whatever else, his address, whatever else I've got, it's all in one place. And if I want to call Johnny, all I do is push his phone number. I'll call his mobile number right now. And now we are calling Johnny here. <coughs> I could turn on a speakerphone like this if I wanted to. Hello, Steve. Hey, Johnny, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing? Well, it's been two and a half years, and I, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to make the first public phone call with iPhone. <laughs> I, I remember when we first started working on this, and it's just, it's just unbelievable. Whoa, whoa, what is this? I've got another call coming in. Johnny, can I put you on hold for a minute? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I put Johnny on hold, and hi, Phil. Hi, oh, Steve. I want you to be the first call. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phil. As you can see, it's put, it's put Johnny on hold. And Phil, I can just touch Johnny and bring Johnny back. Hey, Johnny, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, listen, uh, Phil called. Do uh, you mind if I uh, conference him in? I, I guess so. <laughs> you can see the uh, button has changed to merge calls right there in the middle. So I just push that right here. And now I've created a conference call. Johnny, you there? I'm here. Phil, you there? Oh, still hanging on. So here we are. And uh, listen, I got to get back to my keynote. So uh, if I want to do that, what I'm gonna, I just touch this arrow right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Johnny private here and uh, put Phil on hold. Johnny, do you have anything to say on the first phone call? It, it's, uh, it's not too shabby, is it? <laughs> it's not too shabby. You take care, Johnny. I'll see you later. And I end this call, and it fills on hold. I take him off a of hold. Phil, thanks very much. I've got to get back to the keynote now. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty. <laughs> so now I've also got a way to make a list of favorites here for my most often called number, so I can just touch it once and dial, dial the number. And I might want to add somebody to favorites. So let's say I want to add Phil Schiller. I just push that plus button in the upper right-hand corner right there. And up pop my favorites. And I can just go to uh, the S's here. And there, there's Phil. So uh, Phil Schiller right there. And uh, I'll put, uh, let's say I want to put Phil's work number. And it's added Phil right there. You can see the favorites. I can edit favorites by pushing the edit button in the upper left-hand corner. And I can move Phil up if I want to, you know, maybe to the top. And uh, let's say I'm not going to. You know, Todd, Tony's changed his number. I've got to update this anyway, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I could just remove Tony. Boom. There we go. It's that simple to edit these things. Very, very easy. I've got recents right here, which is all my recent phone calls. If I want to see the ones I've missed, which are in red, I can just go up and touch that button at the top. And boom, those are all the ones I've missed. And those are all the calls that I've placed or have gotten. If I want to dial the phone, if I'm real last century, I can push keypad here. And uh, I can dial a call just with, oops, called four, sorry. <laughs> Wrong number. 408-996-1010. Uh, uh, and it formats the numbers. And uh, if I want to, I can uh, just keep dialing. Let's say it's a European number. And the numbers just keep getting smaller. Real simple. Very simple to dial with a keypad. Now let me show you visual voicemail. This is so cool. This is a collaboration that we've done. 
which I'll talk more about later. And uh, it allows us to have random access voicemail, go directly to the voicemails we want. So as an example, I come to my voicemail and I say, oh, there's one by Al Gore. I want to hear that one. I just push it. Hi, David Al. Wish I could be there today. I'm here in Nashville training people to give my slideshow. But I wanted to say congratulations on the iPhone. It is unbelievably cool. Good luck with the presentation. Call me later. Now, if I want to call Al back right now, I can just push that call back button. But I want to listen to one from Tim Cook I've got here. So let me listen to Tim. Hi, Steve. It's Tim. I've got the results from last quarter. Revenue was, it, you know, I'll just wait and tell you when I see you in person. <laughs> Good luck on the keynote. See you there. And that's awesome. And so I've got voicemail, how I want to listen to it, when I want to listen to it, in any order I want to listen to it with visual voicemail. So that is a quick tour of the phone app. Now what I want to do is show you SMS texting. So I just go to that SMS icon in the upper left-hand corner and push it. And I not only have SMS texting, but I have multiple sessions. So I can be carrying on conversations with people, and every time I get a new message from them, I'll be alerted to that, and I can go check it out. So as an example here, I've got Eddie Q, and I've been carrying on a conversation with Eddie, and I just tap this, and here's the conversation I've been carrying on right here. Right? And if there's a new message, they'll tell me. So there's a new message from Phil. And uh, let's see, the conversation was what? Hey, Steve. Hi. Still on for dinner tonight? Absolutely. Your turn to pick. I've picked Sushi Ron. How about 7 o'clock tonight? And I, say, I can just say, you know, sounds great. And I've got this little keyboard, which is phenomenal. It does error pre uh, prevention and correction. Uh, not that I won't make some. I probably will. But it's actually really fast to type on. It's faster than all these little plastic keyboards on all these smartphones. So I can just say, sounds great. See you there. And I can send that. And there it is. Right? It's that simple. And when Phil messages me back, I'll be alerted. I'll see the dot, and I can just go pick up that conversation where it left off. If I want to send a message to Eddie I, or Scott, I just push this and send a message and go. It's so simple. So that's SMS messaging. And uh, you know, I, again, you've seen the keyboard. It's pretty awesome. We'll come back to that a little bit later. And the third app I want to show you as part of the phone package is Photos. You know, We have a two megapixel camera built in, as I said. We also have the coolest photo management app uh, ever, certainly on a mobile device, but I think maybe ever. And uh, so here's, uh, here's our photos. I'm going to go into our photo library. And this is our library. And again, I can just scroll through photos here with my finger. Pretty cool. Let me go to uh, photo album. I'll pick uh, Italy. And I just, uh, let's start at the top. And to go through pictures, I just swipe them. I can just swipe through my photo library. Oh, there's one that's, uh, that's landscape. I can just turn my device and take a look at it. Pretty cool, huh? Boom. Right? So I can even swipe when I'm in landscape here. You know? Isn't this awesome? <laughs> the other thing I can do is uh, I can take any of these pictures and uh, I can make them bigger. And uh, so let me go ahead and get the camera back up. Yeah, there it is right there. I can, uh, I can just take my fingers and I can, we call it the pinch. I can bring them closer together or move them further apart to make it bigger or smaller. And so I can just move them further apart and stretch the image. <laughs> That's cool. I move it around. That's cool. And now, now what I can do is I can uh, pick to uh, make this my uh, wallpaper. And of course, I could, you know, jigger it around then and just set the wallpaper. And now, when I, uh, if I'm back at home and I go to sleep, when I wake up from here on out until I reset it, that's my wallpaper. Whenever I'm making a call, that's what I'm going to see. Boom. There we go. So photos, SMS, and the phone app. That is part of our phone package for iPhone. Get a call again.
really great call management features. Just scroll through contacts with your finger. All the information at your fingertips here. Favorites, last century, visual voicemail, calendar, SMS texting, incredible photo app, the ability to just take any picture and make it your wallpaper. It's pretty unbelievable. And I think when you have a chance to get your hand on it, you'll agree, we have reinvented the phone. OK. So now let's take a look at an internet communications device. It's part of iPhone. So what's this all about? Well, we've got some real breakthroughs here. Start off with, we've got rich HTML email on iPhone. The first time really rich email on a mobile device. And it works with any IMAP or POP email service. You got your favorite mail service, it'll likely work with it. And it's rich text email. We wanted the best web browser in the world on our phone, not a baby web browser or a WAP browser, a real web browser. And we picked the best one in the world, Safari. And we have Safari running on iPhone. It is the first fully usable HTML browser on a phone. Third, we have Google Maps. Maps, satellite images, directions, and traffic. This is unbelievable. Wait till you see it. We have widgets, starting off with weather and stocks. And this communicates with the internet over edge and Wi-Fi. And iPhone automatically detects Wi-Fi and switches seamlessly to it. You don't have to manage the network. It just does the right thing. Now. I want to take a second and talk about email. We hook up to almost any IMAP or POP3 mail service. I just want to give you some examples. IMAP, of course, is the best because you can keep your folders and all your email on the server and access it from anywhere. Uh, Yahoo, e Yahoo Mail is IMAP. Microsoft Exchange has an IMAP option. And obviously, .Mac Mail is IMAP as well. POP3, Google Gmail, AOL Mail, and most ISPs are POP3 email. Now, I want to take a minute and highlight one, Yahoo Mail. Yahoo Mail is the biggest mail service in the world. They have over a quarter billion users. Biggest email service in the world. And today, we are announcing with Yahoo that they are going to provide free push IMAP email to all iPhone customers. <laughs> so this isn't just IMAP email. It is push IMAP email, so when you get a message, it'll push it right out to the phone for you. Same as a BlackBerry. Free IMAP push email from Yahoo. So we think this is a pretty big deal. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you Mail, Safari, Google Maps, and widgets running on iPhone. So let's go see. So let's go into mail. Second icon from the left on the bottom there. I just touch it with my finger, and boom, I'm there. And so I've got an inbox here. And this is, by the way, running live on Yahoo IMAP email. This stuff is coming off a Yahoo server somewhere up in the cloud. And uh, so I can say, James Vincent here sent me an email. Yeah, he's a proud father. And there we go. And I can just scroll it here. I've got inline photos, rich text email. There we go. Let's look at another one. Phil Schiller. She loved the gift. Again, inline photos, rich text. Pretty nice. Shopping list. Again, rich text right here. Pretty cool. Directions to Sushi Ron for tonight's dinner. Now, iPhone, of course, parses out phone numbers. And as you can see, there's a phone number in blue. I can just touch it, and boom, I'm going to call this place. Right? I don't really want to call them, so I'm going to end the call here. <laughs> but you get the idea. And uh, this last one, uh, Ken Bereskin is uh, one of our marketing folks. He just returned from Antarctica. Ken's a great photographer, and he took all these great photos of, uh, of penguins in Antarctica. It's really cool. Look at this. Isn't this great? 
right in your email, right on your phone. And if I want to, by the way, I can uh, look at my email with a split view just like I do on my computer. And so I can select something here and just look at it down here if I want to peruse my messages real fast and just find that one message I was looking for. But I actually like the full screen view. And of course, we have a standard inbox and drafts and sent and, you know, and all sorts of folders you can put things in as well. So it's real email just like you're used to uh, on your computer right here on your phone. It's extraordinary. And again, free IMAP email from Yahoo. Now, let me go ahead and just uh, create an email message, show you what that's like. So again, when I don't need the keyboard, it's not there. When I do, it's there. I want to send a message to, uh, let's say, Phil. I just type PH, and boom, Phil Schiller. It's address completion. And maybe I'll send one to Scott Forrestal as well. And there's Scott right there. And uh, let's say the subject is uh, dinner. Dinner, and uh, uh, let me know. Oops. See you tonight. Boom. And I just send send. Sends that email, and we're done. So that is mail. Full desktop class email running on a mobile device. All right, now I want to show you something incredible. I want to show you Safari running on a mobile device. So let's go to the web. And here we are. I'm going to load in, uh, rather than apple.com here, a, a little uh, more universal site. I'm going to load in the New York Times. It's kind of a slow site because it's got a lot of images. But here we are loading it. We're loading it over Wi-Fi right now. And rather than just give you a WAP version of the New York Times, rather than give you this wrapped version all around, we're showing you the whole New York Times website. And there it is. And guess what I can do? I can just put this into landscape mode, and there it is right there. And I can scroll here if I want. Scroll up and down here. Boom. Still loading it in. There we go. Or I can just get back like this. Now, this is really great, and I can see the whole page. But of course, I can't read it. It's a little too small. So I can get in with my fingers and pinch it. But we have an optimization here. I can just double tap on anything, and it automatically fills up the screen with it. And I can just scroll around like this and scroll over here. And I can even make this text bigger if I want to. And there it is. <laughs> and just double tap again to get back to the full page. Isn't this cool? And so I'm just, look at this. There is the New York Times. And again, any article I want, boom. There we go. Boom. Unbelievable. Now, you can look at multiple web pages as well. You can have multiple web pages open. So I just push this button in the lower right-hand corner, shrinks it down, and I could add a new page if I want. And uh, I'll go to uh, Amazon here out of my bookmarks. So let's go to Amazon. And I love to go to the DVD section of Amazon and see what DVDs are selling. I like it especially when Disney's are at the top. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so here's Amazon coming in. Even before the whole page is loaded, I'm just going to double tap on this. And, and uh, I'm going to say, let's go to the DVD section here. And now it's doing that. And here we are. And there's a section over here on the right-hand side, right there. And these are the top sellers, updated hourly. Oh, look, Al's An Inconvenient Truth is number one. All right. And here's all the other movies. Grey's Anatomy, I like that. Pirates of the Caribbean, fantastic. And so I've got this right here. And I can go back to the New York Times if I want. No? Let's zoom up to that picture so we can all see it. And again, here. Isn't this cool? Just over there and go back to this one. I can get rid of them just by hitting the X. And there we go. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Safari. <laughs> you know, if you've ever used what's called a web browser on a mobile phone, you'll know how incredible this is. I hope you never really know.
because it's, it's bad out there today. And this is a revolution of the first order to really bring the real internet to your phone. Let me show you some about widgets here. Uh, let's go to stocks right now. And we're going to load stock information off the web. And uh, just right onto the phone here. Oh, look, Apple's up. <laughs> That's great. Now I can look at different graphs here if I want to. And uh, that's fantastic. Let's look at the percentages here. Oh, good. Good, good. So I've got stocks right here, and uh, I can go look at the weather. Let's see what, uh, what it's like outside. Forty-nine degrees, but it's supposed to get to 61 today, so that's good. We'll just stay in here till it warms up. Now, I've got uh, Paris right here. I can have as many of these as I want, so it's nighttime in Paris. It's actually warmer in Paris at night than it is here today. Wow. Aspen, well, no snow till later in the week. And Hawaii, oh, it's raining. That's not good. Well, anyway, here's four places, Hawaii, Aspen, Paris, and San Francisco, and again, the weather widget. Now, to conclude with the internet device section here, I want to show you something truly remarkable, which is Google Maps on iPhone. And I hit our Maps application here, and it's coming up. <clears throat> and it shows us North America, and I'm going to go to Moscone West. That's where we are right now. And here we are. Boom. That's where we are. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, look for something. I'm, I'm going to certainly want a cup of coffee afterwards, so I'm just going to look for Starbucks, right? Starbucks. So I'm going to search for Starbucks. And sure enough, there's all the Starbucks. <laughs> now, I can get a list of Starbucks here. So I can pick that one if I want. And uh, I can even go look at that Starbucks. And there it is. And let's give them a call. Good morning. Starbucks, sir, and how can I help you? Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. No, just kidding. Wrong number. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Now, I can zoom in uh, by just, uh, again, pinching if I want to, or I can just double-click to zoom in, and uh, I get just uh, higher and higher resolution versions of the map. So let's go somewhere else here that I've got bookmarked. And uh, let's go to the Washington Monument. And so here is Washington, D.C., and I could uh, just double tap, and, and uh, I'm going in a little further here, just double tapping in. And there's the Washington Monument there, and I'll double tap in again. And, uh, but now I want to show you something else, satellite images. So I just hit this button called Satellite down at the bottom, and it's going to replace the map with satellite images. There we go. And uh, I can just double tap in. And double tap in again. And uh, let's, let's catch up to me here. There we go. And let's double tap in again. This is the Washington Monument. There we go. Look at this. You see people down there. Oops. There we go. Yep. Isn't that incredible? Right on my phone. It's unbelievable. So let's go. Uh, I've got another one, uh, the Eiffel Tower, which is very cool. I set this one uh, to be, uh, look at this. There's the Eiffel Tower. There's people at the Eiffel Tower, you can see. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? And here, just one last one. I have to show you the Colosseum in Rome. So again, here we are in Rome. Yeah, that's as far as we can go with the map, but we can go a little further with the satellite. There's the Colosseum. There's the Roman Colosseum. Satellite imagery right on the phone. Look at that. That's the Colosseum. Unbelievable. Right on our phone. What do you think? Isn't that incredible? So, so, all these amazing things. This is a breakthrough internet communicator built right into iPhone. The first rich HTML email on a phone, the first real web browser on a phone, 
best version of Google Maps on the planet, widgets, and all with Edge and Wi-Fi networking. We're very, very happy with this. Again, email, push email, IMAP, free, Yahoo, and almost any other IMAP and pop mail service you want to hook up to. Incredible new technology for entering text, far better than we've seen on phones before. A real browser on the phone. We can see real web pages in portrait or landscape. We can zoom in on what we want to take a look at more closely. Google Maps and widgets. It's the internet in your pocket for the first time ever. Now, you can't, you can't really think about the internet, of course, without thinking about Google. Right? And for Google, what we have on our phone, working with them, is of course Google Search. We have that built right into the browser. Just type what you want, hit Google, and you're off. And Google Maps. We've been working very closely with them to make this all happen. We're thrilled with the results. And it's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Eric Schmidt, Google's CEO.